on February 24, 2022, at 9.35 in the morning, Russian tanks entered the village of Khatin in the Sumy region. I woke up in the morning, made my way to the center of Khatin, and already there are Russian tanks and heavy machinery moving along our streets, heading toward Kiev. Mykola Taryanik is chairman of the Khatin Township Council. Eleven out of the 14 villages that make up the township are on Russia's border. VOA spoke with him before the invasion, when things were calm. But today, he says Russian shelling is a way of life. The village of Kindrativka was shelled an hour ago, two direct hits. There was this one old lady. She said she just sat down to eat when there was a hit. She comes into the bedroom and sees that one wall is missing. Taranik says there are no military targets in Khatin. Russian forces are shelling civilian infrastructure. The schools have been severely damaged, and so has the kindergarten. The hospital was hit directly and has burned down, and we had just finished restoring and renovating it. Some 100 men from the Khatin township are fighting on the front lines. To help them, the township allotted about $270,000 in funds. In February 2022, VOA also talked with Sumi resident Andri Bukin, who had hoped there would be no war, but was ready to fight if the need arose. He has been fighting in the National Guard since then. In the first days of the war, a huge number of people were evacuating their families, but an equally large number of people took weapons in their hands and have been protecting their motherland ever since. Some here in the Sumi region, some in the Donbass region. Bukin also tried to evacuate his family when the war started. We ended up in Ternopil. From there, my family continued farther west, and I turned around and headed back to Kyiv. There are few here who hold out hope that the war will end soon. Yet, Sumy residents, who were among the first to see Russians invade, are determined to see them leave as well. For Alena Adaminka in the Sumy region, Ukraine, NRIs, VOA News.